If you have a box or two or five of the stuffing mix in your pantry, I'm gonna show you some different ways to use it with some new recipes. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. I love to have the stovetop dressing on hand. I also like the Aldi brand just as much and it's a good bit cheaper. It was less than a dollar a box. They had different flavors, of course. They have the chicken, the turkey, cornbread. I forget all of the different flavors that they have. But this is a great way to bulk up a meal and to get that bread kind of mixed in with the meal so you don't have to make bread on the side. So today I'm gonna to show you several different recipes on how to use stuffing in a main dinner dish. And I do have one breakfast dish too. This first recipe we're gonna make is called contest winning broccoli chicken casserole. A subscriber sent this to me and told us we needed to try it. This is from Sherry. She said the only thing that she does differently than what the directions say to do is that she mixes her stuffing mix all throughout and doesn't just put it on top. So we're gonna give this one a try. Now, a lot of these recipes you'll see where you don't have to do anything to the stuffing mix, you just use as is. But with this recipe, we're actually going to follow the directions on the back. It only takes five minutes to prepare this and then we'll assemble everything and get in the oven. So we're gonna get started by preheating the oven to 350. Now we're gonna bring a cup and a half of water up to boil. Now my directions on the back of the box say to add also butter to this, but in the directions for the recipe, it says to use only the water portion. So we're not going to add butter. Ma'am, do you know? She knows. For this first one, I am gonna be using the chicken flavored stuffing mix from Aldi. Our water is boiling, which means we need to add all of the stuffing mix in and we need to stir it around and get it coated really well. And then we're gonna remove it from the heat. We're gonna put a lid on it and we're gonna let it sit for five minutes. While that is sitting and doing its thing, let's move over and start mixing the rest. Okay, the recipe calls for two cups of cooked chicken. I have more like three cups. So because of that, I'm gonna add a little more liquid stuff in. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a little bit. But we've got about three cups of chicken here. This is just a rotisserie chicken that I had picked apart and frozen. And then I just thawed it out for this. There's still a few pieces that are a little, a little frozen together, but for the most part, it's thawed. You need one cup of frozen broccoli florets thawed. So these are thawed and ready to go in. And then you need a can of broccoli cheese soup. This is the condensed soup. We are not going to do anything to it other than just add it in here to the mix. Now, because we have so much chicken, I'm scared that that liquid is not gonna be enough and it's gonna dry out. You could definitely add some milk or I'm gonna add just a little bit of sour cream. And then for some extra seasoning, I know our mix is gonna have plenty of seasoning in it, but I really love paprika with um, chicken. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon. So let's mix all of this together. Now we just need to go grab our stuffing mix from the stove. So let's add this in with the mixture because that's what Sherry does. She's the one who sent in the recipe. Mix that all together. Oh man, this smells good already. And everything is already cooked, so at this point, you're just basically gonna be heating this through. So let's spray our dish with a little bit of olive oil. This is an 11 by seven, and we're just going to dump all of this in, spread it all out, and then we're gonna to top it with our cheese. I have one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Now we just need to cover this. We're gonna bake for 20 minutes covered, and then we will remove it and then bake for another 10 minutes. It has been 20 minutes. So let's just take this off and pop it back in there for another 10 minutes. This looks good. <laughs> He's been so excited. I like broccoli stuff. Yeah. Wow. Is really it good? good. Yeah, I like it. So, I knew I was gonna like it too. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it smells amazing. So it's kind of hard not to like this. It's really right. good. Lots of good flavor. The stuffing and everything. The chicken flavor, cheddar cheese, mm -hmm. the broccoli, which is one of my favorite ingredients in yeah. a casserole like this. Or yeah. Whatever. All right. Well, mm -hmm. good. Is it very comfort foodish? Mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely. All right. I'm gonna dig in 
this looks so good and my house smells amazing highly recommend I was scared it would be overly salty so I didn't add extra salt but I think it was perfect it was very creamy it was creamy. Very I didn't creamy. like it I, I thought it was so bad that I had to get rid of it yeah you know I just I mean you'll have that okay y'all for our second recipe we need to have a chat first you ready pull up a chair grab some coffee let's chat if you can remember back to I don't know 20 21. You remember when eggs didn't cost an arm and a leg? Yeah, I know. It's hard to remember. But if you were to make this recipe back then, it would be a really cheap recipe to make. I just want to acknowledge that using eight eggs in a recipe makes it an expensive recipe now. Just keep that in mind. It does use eight eggs, therefore you've got to shell out the dough to make this recipe. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, elephant is out of the room. Let's make a breakfast stuffing casserole. We're gonna be using sausage. You can use bacon if you want to. Um, you could even do turkey bacon or turkey sausage. We're just using regular old Jimmy Dean sausage. And you can use whatever flavor cornbread stuffing that you want. I'm gonna be using this turkey one just because that's what I have on hand. First things first, let's preheat the oven to 350. I'm heating up my large pan to about medium high or so, and we are going to brown up a pound of sausage along with, this is about half of a large bell pepper that I diced, and this is about half of an onion that I diced. So all of that is gonna get cooked together. Okay, that is over there cooking on the stove. We're gonna crack our very expensive eight eggs here. So just a heads up, if you are not already subscribed to my newsletter, you can do so on mandyinthemaking.com. Just scroll down until you see where it says to subscribe to the newsletter. You'll get your first time, you'll get a freebie uh, in your inbox with four or actually five of my family's favorite recipes. This is all cooked. Let's just drain it really quickly onto this paper towel and throw some on the floor because that's what I just did. Okay, I'm letting my uh, sausage and onions cool just a few minutes before I add them into my eggs. I am gonna add just a little bit of the everything seasoning to my eggs, not a lot, because there is gonna be a lot of seasoning in the sausage itself and then the cornbread, or not the cornbread, the stuffing mix. Okay, to our eggs, let's add in our one pound of sausage along with our peppers and onions, it's still quite hot. Let's stir that around. And then you also want to add in about a half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. First things first, let me pull some out for you know who. And our stuffing mix, this is a six ounce bag. So let's just stir all of that. I think this is gonna be really, really tasty, just from the smell of it right here. Okay, let's move this to the side and grab our casserole dish. Oh, and this. Okay, so I've got an eight by an eight here and I'm just going to spray it with a little bit of olive oil and it just says a small casserole dish. It doesn't say the size, so I'm gonna go with eight by eight. Wow. That looks so delicious. This is going in the oven at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes. Someone's in the kitchen, kitchen. with... Mandy? <laughs> <laughs> Dinah. Someone's in the kitchen, I know. Oh, oh, oh. You don't know this? No. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Strumming on the old banjo. Is that right? Tell me. Scott and Mary Beth Jeffries said, if you spray your baking container with cooking spray first, the parchment will stick and keep the form of the cooking vessel. So, several of you told me this. When I was making the Oreo fudge in my three ingredient mm. appetizers video, I, I was struggling with the parchment paper. I have used the trick before where you wrinkle it up, like you put it into a ball, you wrinkle it into a ball and then spread it back out. But I've never done that when I was trying to put it in a container. I've always just done it when I'm laying it flat. flat. Funny thing, my friend Glamber, mm -hmm. Amber, was watching one of my videos and she messaged me and she said, Mandy, why is your parchment paper wrinkly? Are you re reusing your parchment paper? I said, no, that's a trick to get it to lay flat. <laughs> But several of you said to do that, to spray the baking dish with some type of spray, like non-stick spray, and then the parchment pa paper will stick and take the form. So thank you for that tip. This looks amazing, y'all. 
and it smells so good. I love breakfast for dinner. I'm telling you what. It's one of my favorites. Sausage is one of my very favorite uh, breakfast foods. Yes. So the fact that you have incorporated that into mm -hmm. this is outstanding. Awesome. I mean, who would have thought? I know. Stuffing and sausage. I mean, it sounds good to me. Let's try it. Okay. Here we go. Mmm. <laughs> oh, man. I've never had anything like this. Okay, good. I mean, this is Yeah, this is very different. different. Yep. Lots of, um, you know, the stuffing, you got a lot of the herb mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. flavors that come out. The egg and the stuffing are kind of like... The binding, that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the binding. And it's not, uh, it's not dry. Okay, good. So there's some moisture in there. Uh-huh. Very careful how we <laughs> said that. So mm. I'm going to dig in. We've got blackberries and blueberries and a cat. Oh, yeah. Lou, you just get louder each time. Well, you do. Hmm. Yeah. Tell them. I love breakfast casseroles. I think I love this one the most. That's a big claim. But I love that even though there's eight eggs in here, that's not the first thought on your mind is like, oh, this is an egg casserole. And it's super filling because of all the stuffing. Yeah, it's definitely filling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't, I mean, just one scoop of this and you're good to go. because You've got that bread in there. You've got your proteins. Mm -hmm. Definitely a nice twist on bre breakfast casserole. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really, really, really digging this. I love all the flavors, the peppers and the onions in there. Educate us. Tell them. I just got educated myself. Well, we did because old Google came to the rescue. Tell them what you said grandma calls these. Grandma. Or grandma and Pop used to call these snake berries. So these are blackberries, obviously. And yeah. he said that they always called them snake berries. And I said, well, why? Mm -hmm. The snakes like to eat them? Or what? what is the reason? I said, snakes ain't eat those berries. <laughs> but. They do. They do. Apparently, the blackberry plant attracts copperheads and rattlesnakes. So it says, do not plant those anywhere near where children play. Who knew? Yeah. They'd always tell me when I was a little kid to be careful out there picking them snake berries. That's why I they told you why. that. They I thought maybe just, they were just trying to tell me to be careful, you know. Right. But I didn't realize that they eat blackberries. I didn't know that either, babe. I did not know You that. made fun of me when I said, did they eat them? You said, I did. they I don't said, eat that. Snake ain't never eat a blackberry. <laughs> Your mom didn't bite snakes one, <laughs> one time. I don't know anybody that loves snakes. She, I mean, she had a, a big time phobia about snakes. Right. Because apparently one time when she was a kid, when she was in the garden, there was a snake called a, a black racer mm -hmm. that she told me about. Mm -hmm. That it would like stand up like this and Correct. it would chase you. Yes. Well, that happened to her, um, and ever since then, she was just like, I wouldn't have nothing to do, do with Do you snake. remember, later on in life, I don't know if Grandma had already passed, but there was a black snake in Pop and Grandma's house, and Pop thought it was a belt, <laughs> and he reached down to pick it up, and it slithered off? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's scary stuff. Pop did, it didn't bother Pop too no, much. No, Pop didn't care. Pop. <laughs> whatever. It's, like, it's a black whatever. snake. He probably was happy. Yeah. When I was little, I had this little plastic snake that oh gosh i got Steven. from the i was probably with grandma at the a and p you want to go to the a and p <laughs> yes grandma can i have a toy well we'll see if you be good you know <laughs> <laughs> anyway she, i had one of those little plastic snakes well i left it in my pocket oh so, so grandma Steven. could find it she had reached down him up because she had to wash my clothes right one day well i stuck it down in there Steve. She reached down in that pocket, pulled that snake out. <laughs> she sent me home Real quick. crying. She would say, I sent him home squalling. <laughs> he was just squalling all the way home. But anyway, Served you right. I did. I got my, I felt so bad that I hurt her. I wrote her a note. Oh, I think I remember this Telling story. her that I, that I was sorry and that Aww. I loved her. And she hung that note up on the refrigerator uh -huh. and kept that note forever. Forever. I know. For as long as I can remember. I think I, I remember that. that note, sweetheart. It was on a little yellow yep. notepad. Yep. That's sure so sweet. Did. I a love that. A little sticky note. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Mr. Snakeberry. <laughs> Here's what you'll need for the recipe one box of stovetop savory herbs stuffing mix, a fourth a cup of milk, a fourth a cup of butter, melted, six slices of Swiss cheese. A can of cream of chicken soup, 
and six chicken breasts, but I'm only using four since my family is a little bit smaller. And it doesn't call for this, but I do stab the chicken and then sprinkle on the nature seasoning. It's made by Morton's. It's a great seasoning mix that I like to add to chicken. Then you just combine the cream of chicken along with the milk and then pour that into the bottom of the slow cooker. The recipe tells you to put the chicken in first, but I put the soup down first and then the chicken just so that the stuffing does not get soggy throughout the day. Now I'm just layering the chicken to lay on top of the soup that I've already put in there. Now you just put a piece of cheese on each chicken breast. I only have four chicken breasts, but I do use more than four pieces of cheese, simply because I want cheese over every square inch of that chicken. Now that the cheese is on top of the chicken, the last thing to do is just to pour the stuffing mix on top of everything. And then after the stuffing mix is on there, you're gonna take your melted butter and just drizzle that over top of it all. And that's it. You put the lid on and you can turn it on high for two to three hours or low for four to six hours. This day, it was a little bit later in the afternoon, so I did just do high on three hours and it was perfect. I'm gonna show you what it looks like after I've already taken a bite and remembered, oh yeah, I need to film this. It is so delicious. It's my husband and son's favorite chicken dish. It's time for another recipe, y'all. And do you know what I'm doing? I'm pulling stems off of baby spinach. <laughs> a lot of you have told me that you pull the stems off too. I don't pull off every single stem, but all the really, like the longer ones, that's, that's pretty long. Um, but there's some super long ones. I just, I can't, I can't. This is called straight out of heaven casserole. We're gonna be the judge of that. First of all, we're gonna be using three cups of this. I need to pull some more. But then we've also got carrots, onion, celery, Got about two cups of um, rotisserie chicken. And then we've got some chicken broth, our stuffing mix, of course, and then I'm gonna add garlic in too. The recipe calls for three carrots, but my carrots are pretty large in case you can't tell. So I'm just gonna use two and it says that they just need to be sliced. So I'm gonna cut them in half and then I'm gonna slice them in half moons. The recipe calls for two ribs of celery. Mine are very, very small, so I'm doing three but it says you can dice them or slice them. So I'm just gonna just really thinly slice these. Lastly, we need one cup of diced onion. I don't know why I didn't grab my veggie dicer for this stuff because I didn't think about it, I guess. But I've got a small onion or medium sized onion that I'm just gonna dice really quickly. So we've got our Instant Pot ready. Let's go ahead and turn it on to saute and we're going to wait for it to come up to where it says it's hot. Okay, it says it's hot. So let's throw in a couple of tablespoons of butter and let that melt. I do have my little Instant Pot clip on. I don't know if you can see that, it's right here. It keeps the entire thing from turning as you were sauteing stuff, it's really nice. I've got it linked in my Amazon store below. Now we're gonna throw in our onions, our um, carrots, and our celery. We just need to saute these for five minutes. The last minute or so that it's sauteing, I'm gonna throw in some minced garlic. Okay, we've got about a minute left. So I've got this garlic here. I'm just gonna add some in. Just, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon. I was kind of surprised that this recipe did not call for garlic. We absolutely love it, so you know I had to add it in. So it's been five minutes. These are softened up pretty well. Now we're gonna pour in a cup and a half of chicken broth, and you just wanna scrape the bottom just to make sure you don't have anything stuck. I don't think I do, but if you don't scrape the bottom and you have something stuck on the bottom, just in case you don't know, you will get a burn notice. Now you wanna add in your rotisserie chicken. I've got two cups of that here. And then three cups of chopped spinach. I'm, I didn't chop mine because it is the baby spinach. Oh man, I always find stems that I did not remove. When I go to add it in, they were hiding in there. 
Okay, that's all right. We're just going to move on. And then I'm going to take my stuffing mix. This is the cornbread flavor is what this one calls for. And we're going to pour it on top and we're not going to stir it in. I am going to spread it out just a little bit, but we're not going to stir it in. Okay, let's turn our Instant Pot off. So I'm going to hit the cancel button. I put my lid on. It is set to sealing and we are just gonna pressure cook this for a whopping one minute. That's it. So once that comes up to pressure and does its one minute, then we will quick release all of the steam. Y'all like that? And it'll be time to eat. Teresa Davenport said, I love your videos, especially when you and Steven interact. You seem so great together, lots of laughter. I just celebrated our 49th wedding anniversary in January. Wow. Believe me, the ability to laugh together is key to a lasting marriage. Your recipes look great also. Thank you so much and congratulations. Yeah. 49 years. That's amazing. What are y'all gonna do for your 50th? Is it gonna be a big shindig? Shindig, you like that word? Shindig. Y'all gonna go somewhere, what you gonna do? We haven't really gone anywhere for our anniversary in quite some time. For our 15th anniversary, we went to <laughs> Turks and Caicos. I knew exactly what you were laughing about. <laughs> what am I laughing about? What I thought it was. Okay, yeah, full, full disclosure. <laughs> we went to Turks and Caicos for our 15th. It was fun. And it was great. Yeah, it was wonderful. Tell them. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget where we were. I didn't even know there was such a place as Turks and Caicos. I had never even heard of the place before. <laughs> um, <laughs> At our then, old house. He was sitting in the office, and I walked in to tell him. I was so excited. I had booked this trip. Like, I just did it. I said, you know what? We're just, we're going to go. So I went in, and I said, for our anniversary, I'm going to take a trip to Turks and Caicos. And what did you say? I was like, is that something like the Yellow Mall? He thought it was that, like the Tanger Outlets. He thought it was a store at the Tanger Outlets. I That's thought what it we was were like some kind of place you go shopping or something. I, I was like, what is Turks and Caicos? You know, I never even heard of that. <laughs> He said, you know. is that at the Yellow Mall? Baby, no, we're leaving the country, Turks and Caicos. He was like, oh, I just thought it was a store at the Yellow Mall. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you, oh, my you need to go to Turks and Caicos, babe. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun time. It was. We had a Snorkeling. blast. I went parasailing. Parasailing, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> I could not help it. It's okay, I'm okay. It's okay, I'm okay. It's okay, I'm okay. It's okay, I'm okay. The whole time. The whole time. <laughs> just, it's okay, I'm okay. It's okay, I'm okay. And, uh, I, was... I think she was thinking that while we were up in the air, we were going to like just... land in the water. And, no, like, I was scared I that think... it was going to break too, and then we were just going to float yeah, off into the distance. I think she was visualizing like jaws coming up from the, yes. <laughs> the sea, and that and we just were just going to land right into his mouth or something. Yes. But the entire time we were up there, it was making all these noises, like the harness and everything. It was making like these creaking noises. He was like, wow, babe, look at that. Wow, look at that. And I was going, it's, it's okay. okay. I'm okay. It's okay. I'm okay. It's okay. I'm okay. It's okay. I'm okay. It's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm okay. It came up to temperature. It counted down from one to zero. Now let's release the steam. Why do I struggle? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna put my Instant Pot clip back on just to hold it in place. And you wanna stir this really well. Oh my goodness, y'all. I wish you could smell this. So when I said, you ready? You said. I was born ready. <laughs> Especially when it comes to something that smells this good. I mean, this house smells amazing. Well, it tastes just as good as it smells. Does it? Yes. That is amazing. So it's called Straight Out of Heaven Casserole. <laughs> yeah. It lives up to the name. For okay, sure. good. This is by far the favorite of the ones I've of made. The ones that you've made. Okay. Yes. The flavor, the you can tell that the the holy trinity the or whatever. The holy trinity, it was, yeah. Carrots, onion, and celery. Man. It's tremendous. Okay. As much as I love the breakfast casserole and still do, this is my favorite of oh, the ones yeah. I've made as well. Oh, this is really, 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 really it good. It is amazing. I love, I love the texture of it. Yeah. The other ones had, I mean, this, this one has a lot more moisture in the, uh, yeah. 
in the stuffing. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it stand out to me. Right. It's got a lot more moisture in there. Obviously, the flavors are just... And the veggies are perfect. Yeah, it's not like They're a... They're not mush. Yeah, it's a good balance and a good blend of flavors. Yeah. Whereas yeah. in the other ones, the stuffing kind of takes center takes stage. Over. Yeah, yeah. This one here is a more balanced approach. It's really good. All of them have been great. Mm -hmm. But this one, I see why they call it straight out of heaven casserole. Y'all have got to make this. Steven, you said this is a... Go backer. It's a go backer. He's going to go get more. 